This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The NBA is back off of its all-star break tonight with a massive 12-game slate. We're here to break down that slate with Tom Vecchio getting his read on his favorite NBA bets across tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook and also talking about a revamped version of the Daily ISO where Tom is talking player props each and every weekday right here in the FanDuel Podcast Network as well. This is covering the spread right here in that very same FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Search. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Breaking down tonight's NBA slate. Tom, happy Thursday. Happy, do we want to call it second half? I know they're more than halfway through the year, but let's call it second half to you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. The other day we talked all about the NHL. Today is all about the NBA. Uh, a lot going on, you know, coming down to the stretch run for the teams. We will see things tighten up as the year goes on in terms of player rotations. Uh, no more messing around with uh, getting these random bench players involved. We're going to see 10-man rotations drop to eight, bring us a little more consistency, those types of things. So it sounds like from a DFS player perspective, from a prop betting perspective, it's golden, baby, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to say at this point in the year, coaches, maybe outside of the box with Doc Rivers, coaches should have things figured out by this point. Like, they know it works, they know it doesn't work. No more messing around, push for the playoffs, bring us a... Uh, a higher level of trust, I would like to say, from coaches, uh, and that's what we should see going forward. All right, so we'll break down what Tom is seeing as far as value for tonight and talk about uh, the new revamped Daily ISO here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Covering the Spread on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, you can find us there. While you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers... Get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA, must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Tom, we're going to dig into the games here in just a second. But first, I want to talk about the new version of the daily ice that we have over on the FanDuel research podcast feed if you are a former subscriber to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed you're already good because uh, that subscription does carry over to this renamed podcast feed FanDuel research podcast it's the home of the heat check the daily iso and of course the solo shot down the line as well and I'm pretty pumped about this, Tom, because people have heard your props on sports grid. They've heard them here on covering the spread all across the board. But now you get to top props every single weekday over on the daily ISO as well. So what can people expect from that podcast going forward? Well, it's going to be much of the same, at least to at least in, in part. We're still going to be covering fantasy every single day. We're just going to be adding in props in the beginning portion. And, you know, obviously, a lot of states have sports betting. More states are coming online seemingly like every few months. And it's just a big portion that a lot of people are already doing. It obviously correlates closely with fantasy with players that 
you know, I like to trust. I, I always talk about PRA bets, the points, rebounds, assists. That's one of my favorites, which we talked about two for today, uh, the pod that went up uh, late yesterday afternoon, where it's like we know what these players can do from a usage perspective, from a minutes perspective. We can correlate that close with fantasy because their PRA bets should be relatively consistent. So on a day-to-day basis, I'll run through a few props that I like. Uh, it's obviously going to vary by the size of the slate. We have, you know, 10, 12 games today. I could be talking about three, four, whatever it might be. Uh, but I just think it brings another dynamic of I'm um, betting these props. I also think there's a lot of opportunity in props just because you can jump in early in the day if you know a player might be ruled out. Uh, just a lot to take advantage of. Certainly. And I think that it's exciting for me because we talk to you about NBA probably once or twice per week here on the show. But like, it's hard to fill the needs of everyone as far as when it comes to betting. You know, we have just one covering the spread per day and we want to cover a lot of topics, which means we can't cover the NBA every day. We can't cover the PGA, USC every single week, MLB every day. And now with this new version of the podcast, we can do that without sacrificing covering DFS at the exact same time. And that to me, I think is really exciting. Right. And and that's the main part is it's like it's already happening to begin with. We have so much going on every day in terms of props and games. And especially this time of year, like I said at the top, we should see like a high level of consistency. So if, if we're talking about it already, might as well try and shift it to as much as possible, which is every day since it's it's going to be happening. Right, exactly. So if you want to check out the revamped version of the Daily ISO, whether you're a DFS player, a sports batter, or both, you can check that out over on the FanDuel Research Podcast feed. Just search for FanDuel Research Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe there, Apple, Spotify, etc., etc. And as always, if you like what you hear, drop a five-star rating there. We, of course, are doing hybrid DFS and betting shows for PGA and UFC as well. Just again, search for FanDuel Research Podcast to get that. And Tom's breakdown of today slate for uh, the daily ISO is already posted that is up on FanDuel TV plus and of course on the FanDuel research podcast feed as well now let's kick things off by talking about the Thursday games Tom coming out of the break couple of TNT games for tonight uh, FanDuel Sportsbook actually has an offer of a no sweat same game parlay on each of those games so uh, make sure to check that out if you have interest there Suns Mavericks followed by Lakers Warriors starting off with the Suns and Mavericks any bets you like in that one uh, yeah, let's start off with a player prop there. The one thing I will say is uh, Bradley Beal is questionable. Luca is also uh, – let's still listen to this. Probably may have been upgraded to – yeah, it's probable for today. The line opened up plus three for the Suns, which I really liked. It's now obviously changed. So if Luca gets confirmed, maybe gets the two, two and a half, whatever it might be, I would actually jump in there, not at one and a half. So keep that in mind. But let's go to Devin Booker over two and a half threes. It's sitting at plus 124. And we've talked about threes plenty of times. And you've mentioned that you've talked with Dr. Ed Fang about variance and threes. And there's there's so much going on that, you know, variance can be seen as a bad thing. But also when variance hits on the other side, variance can be a very good thing. Where players that can take seven, eight, nine, ten threes, sure, they're going to go two of 11 sometimes. But if they're shooting at this volume, they're obviously going to be hitting three, four, five threes at times. And that's what we see for Booker. By no means would I say he's a top 10 three-point shooter, but he's still a high-volume shooter. And with Bradley Beal being listed as questionable, dealing with multiple things, a a hamstring injury right before the break, and then he was battling through uh, a nose injury, which he had a procedure done over the break. So, like, I'm not expecting Bradley Beal to go tonight, and we're dealing with a high over-under. I will also say both teams were around the league average when it comes to offensive pace overall. But prior to the break, the last few games before the break, both teams were in the top four of the league in pace. They're actually playing a little bit faster. So, you know, we're kind of combining variance in a good way with, I'm not going to say a ton of extra opportunity. Devin Booker's already a high usage player to begin with. But we have a solid game environment. Uh, I'm going to say Dallas is going to figure things out with adding P.J. Washington to the mix. They have a new starting lineup. They kind of got to get things sorted. I'm not going to say they're the best defensive team. But we should see a lot of scoring tonight. Right now, Devin Booker's three-point prop uh, over two and a half is now plus 126. Did lengthen a hair uh, right as you were talking. So plus 126 now for the Booker over two and a half made threes. You talked about pace uh, leading into the break. How quickly does that stabilize? And do you think that was a concerted effort of these teams to change up their play style? Or could that be just, as we talked about before, variance? 
It's it's probably just variance at the end of the day. I would have to go literally game by game to look at. Sure. What, I don't know if one of those games went to overtime. There was just circumstantial. But, you know, pace is actually pretty stable. You know, we can see teams trending up and down, but on a one or three game basis, obviously anything happened. But pace is, is important just because it, it's a good indication of, you know, theoretical upside based on number of possessions that right. the teams are obviously going to be seeing. Um, I'm not worried about uh, teams regressing massively after one game. I will say overall on tonight's slate, not just for this game specifically, I have a lot of interest in live overs. Come first game out of the break. Sluggish, yeah. Yeah. It, it takes players a quarter, quarter and a half to like get into the flow of things. So live overs, I think is actually uh, a spot to look tonight. Okay, so consider some live overs during the games, but for Booker specifically, over two and a half threes, made threes, is plus 126. As mentioned, other game for tonight is what a lot of intrigue right now. That's the Lakers and the Warriors. That is the other TNT game. Lakers currently favored by five and a half. What are you seeing in this one, Tom? Uh, I'm going to be going to Anthony Davis over 20 and a half points. There is no LeBron James tonight. We know that he has been ruled out. I'm not going to be shocked if we do see another player here or there get ruled out. Uh, we'll touch on one of the game lines in a second that could be impacted by that. This is obviously a very simple, straightforward thing. There's no LeBron James. It's all about Anthony Davis tonight. If you want to have interest in Austin Reeves or D'Angelo Russell, I understand that. I would have more interest in D'Angelo Russell when it comes to a P&A bet, points and assists, uh, just because he's obviously going to be playing a, a facilitator role with LeBron out. The Warriors are extremely lackluster on defense. That's why they're sitting in this play-in kind of situation that they're not as dominant as they once were. There's an opportunity thing. Davis taking all the shots, pushing to 30 points. I don't care who wins the game. We should see some scoring. Both teams are below average on defense. Keep things very straightforward coming out of the, out of the break when the Lakers are in coming down to literal must-win games if they want to make the play-in. You mentioned uh, no LeBron for tonight, which is why Davis's point prop is as high as it is. Currently 28 and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook. Over for him is minus 113 for the Lakers and the Warriors. As always, a fun matchup for tonight, even if the, the team's not as not thriving as much as usual. Still a lot of intrigue around those two teams specifically going on right now. All right, Tom, 10 other games for tonight. Where else is seeing value? Let's start things off here with sides and totals. Anything stand out to you there? Uh, I like the Cavs and Magic under 216, and that's a low number. That is. <laughs> and, you know, especially for today's NBA, it's a low number, but both teams play super slow to begin with. They were actually playing slower coming into the break. Donovan Mitchell for the Cavs, I'm going to say not just the best player on the Cavs, but the best player in the entire game, is listed as questionable tonight due to an illness which is not going to be a surprise to see a lot of players listed as with an illness coming out of the all-star break. If they maybe went away somewhere relatable, let me sell <laughs> Let me say relatable, <laughs> which we have seen plenty of times over the last, however many years. So if he doesn't play, I think it's all about the under that number will obviously drop the offensive expectation, but both teams are solid on defense and they play super slow, specifically the caps really solid defensive team. I think that this is a team that, you don't want to see in the playoffs any team, especially in the first round, that's going to be a tough series. So 216 is a low number. <laughs> if you're looking for excitement games, this is probably not the one you want to tune in to watch tonight. I think there are far better games like Indiana and Detroit. But teams that play slow, offensive expectation low, and again, kind of mentioned, teams may come out a little bit sluggish tonight. So I certainly do side with the under. Okay, as you mentioned, that's a pretty low number. 216 is minus 110. And I always have a hard time personally betting unders on very low totals because you typically expect regression towards the mean. Are you less wary of that at this point in the year where we kind of know exactly what these teams are? So we're not as worried about regression, especially in a sport that's a bit less volatile than a lot of other sports as basketball is? Yeah, um, like we're at the point, like you said, it's not like we're dealing with a 10, 15 game sample size where the Pacers right. started off like, what was it, 14 and one to the over? And they had like, totals that were like 260. Right. It was insane. Yeah. Like that, we're obviously used at a certain point, you just start taking unders just because, and you start, you know, betting right. against the spread just because that's, it's not going to happen. They're not going to be right. 75 and, and seven against the spread. So, yeah, I, at this point in the season, I'm not really worried about it. Other sports that have higher variance, anything can happen, but we should see a relatively low score tonight. And listen, if, if you want don't want to take an under on a 216 game, I understand that, but 
this game ending with one of the teams finishing with less than 100 points wouldn't surprise me. Okay, that's the Magic and the Cavs under 216, minus 110 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other uh, traditional market bets you're eyeing for tonight? Yeah, I have a lean on one, okay. and it's solely dependent on two points of news, and that's for the Rockets and the Pelicans. Okay. So for the Rockets, uh, Fred Van Vliet did not play in the last few games prior to the All-Star break. He said he would play. There's no update on how many minutes would he play. Is there a minutes restriction? Is there a minutes limit? Because the Rockets are pushing for a play-in spot, so these are very important games for them. So it it opened at it's still plus seven. It was plus eight or plus nine yesterday. So will Van Vliet play a full set of minutes? And then Brandon Ingram for the Pelicans is now listed as questionable. So those are two very important things. Van Vliet obviously hugely important for the Rockets. If Ingram doesn't play, they still have Zion Williamson. They still see Jim McCollum. They're still in a good spot. So if they're if Ingram is out, I also have interest in the under in this game, but I also have interest in the Rockets if we do see Van Vliet as a full go. It's a lean as of now, waiting on information. So you mentioned the under 229 and a half, minus 112. Uh, the plus seven is min- or minus 110 right now. That's Rockets and Pelicans. So keep your eye on the news. Obviously, markets shift fast once news does come out. Uh, but if you can get a real situation, if markets don't move as much as, oh, there they go. Uh, the under just went down to 229. So uh, some movement towards the under there. Was 229 and a half, now 229. So already some movement in that direction. Maybe an indicator of your read being correct on those situations. Uh, but that could potentially mean that there may not be value later on. But check the markets. You never know. We'll see what happens uh, throughout the day. What about player props, Tom? What are you seeing uh, elsewhere for props tonight? There's one that I really like. And that's going to be with Tyrese Halliburton of the Indiana Pacers. Over 32 and a half points and assists. Just points and assists, no PRA. Super high over under, as we just mentioned. With the how Pacers. much of this is narrative, given what he's been ta- saying about Detroit recently? Yeah, and nothing to do with that. And this <laughs> is strictly about what we have seen from him. Now, Hal Burton had this uh, hamstring injury, missed some time, comes back, and I was very, as I talked about on the Daily ISO in terms of DFS, I was totally out on Hal Burton, but. We're seeing his, his minutes were in, in the low 20s. Then we see 29, 25, 30, and then 34 and 34 in the last two games prior to the All-Star break. So minutes trending up is obviously a fantastic thing to see for a high-usage player. Halliburton is someone that is consistently going for a dozen assists on a nightly basis. I'm going to say with the, between the time off, he looked good in the All-Star game. Take that obviously with a grain of salt. He's just shooting from half court as everyone is. But he looked good. Uh, throughout the whole weekend and all the events. His minutes were trending up. This is an extremely easy matchup against the Pistons, and it has a super high over-under. So I'm of the belief that Halliburton's lines, as the minutes trend back up towards the high 30s, are not going to be this low because he can drop 30 and 15 in any game. So I will take Halliburton as, as a slight buy low spot right now. So it's not because he was just talking about how shocked he was Detroit did not take him uh, in the draft a couple years ago. He said it felt personal, Tom. How can that not be the number one point of emphasis when it comes to uh, this this analysis? I mean, that's circumstantial about like them drafting uh, Killian Hayes and yeah. then they just released uh, Killian Hayes at the trade deadline. They just straight up dropped him uh, that no one wanted to trade for him. Sure, if you want to add that that little spicy factor in there, I don't mind that. But... You say add as if it's not the primary thing. <laughs> Come on. Listen, I'm all for narratives, bobblehead narratives, birthday narratives, baby narratives, whatever it might be. I, I want to sometimes separate myself from that and strictly rely on like, hey, we are actually trending up for Hal Burton, who's already awesome to begin with. In his his point totals against Detroit are disappointing, I will say. I okay. pulled up his his basketball reference page. I don't look at these because they're not predictive. They're very stupid. This is bad analysis. Don't listen to me. Um, 16.7 points per game, but 11 assists per game across seven games. So, you know, it gets a little, uh, I, gets a little kind of shabby. I would have to double check that sample size of how many games he seven. played. But no, how many games oh. he played when he was with Sacramento. Okay, yeah. Before I he mean, was the player he is today. Tom revenge narratives don't care um they don't care if you are 
fresh in the league or if you are now a superstar it's all the same and dumb splits of a player against a team don't account for context at all obviously why would we care about that we could just look at what he's done against Detroit in the past uh but Halliburton yeah. is a superstar right now the mi- minutes creeping up uh 32 and a half the points plus assist mark for Halliburton over is minus 111 so go with Tom's reasoning the actual data, the actual analysis, not the fact that he's PO'd at this team because he didn't draft him uh, back in the day. You know, just, just throwing that out there as a, right. a little extra incentive for Tyrese Halliburton in this market. Yeah, I would say uh, buy low on some of the Pacers. Pacers making the playoffs. Obviously, that number's probably juiced a, a ton. Um, but Halliburton going for 30 and 15 kind of game is... Uh, Certainly what we should be seeing tonight. Uh, t- no, there's no 35 plus market. 30 plus points is plus 550. We'll just put that out there for Halliburton. That's not a good bet. I'm not saying it's a good bet. Just, you know, just for funsies because of the narrative and nothing else. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. As mentioned, check him out every weekday. Talking NBA player props over on the Daily ISO. Search for FanDuel Research Podcast wherever you get your podcast for that. Plus PGA, UFC, MLB down the line, NFL next year as well, of course. Tom, appreciate the time as always. Happy for you. The All-Star break is done, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me. All right. Again, find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchia1. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Check me out on threads at Jim.Sonis. And find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, Austin Cass swings by to break down EPL Match Week 26. And I'll be talking NASCAR in Atlanta. Cup Series bets that I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 